Well, I'm going to begin uh, firstly just by saying congratulations on the Toronto accolade. Thank I mean, you. It must be such a nice thing when you get like an award like that because it must almost be like a confirmation that actually this film is it is good. I've done a good job here. Yeah, it is because uh, we only finished the film about three weeks or four weeks before Toronto. We showed we showed it at Telluride, which was really lovely. But it, uh, then bring it Toronto to that sort of scale of an audience. And the, the screenings there were really great. The, you could feel the response of the audience and they were very vocal about, about the film. But I still didn't expect us to win the Audience Award. I mean, Audience Awards tend to go to films which are more overtly crowd-pleasing than I thought Room was. And, and, and I, th I think it's a testament to the fact that the film has a really, really strong emotional impact. And, uh, and that's just an amazing thing to feel when you're, when you're sitting with an audience and, and you know that it's connecting with them. And I mean, how do you go about ensuring that this tale about a woman who's locked in a shed for seven years can remain so sort of uplifting? Because there's something very hopeful about this movie. That must have been quite a sort of t t difficult kind of line for you to kind of to walk on, though. Yeah, and, and I mean, Emma's novel, that's what's remarkable about Emma's novel. It's the reason why I was so compelled to try and make it into a film, because it does this amazing thing. You, you know, if you know about it going in, if you know even anything about the setup, you're assuming a certain kind of experience is imminent, a very bleak and a very dark one. And the fact that she turns this around and, and makes this very hopeful, very life-affirming story out of it is what's so remarkable. And I really wanted to do the same thing with the film. I wanted people to, to feel in an unmanipulative way that something very beautiful had been made out of, uh, you know, woven out of quite dark materials. I mean, it must be, it must help because it's what we see this from sort of Jack's perspective. I mean, he's got this kind of blissful kind of naivety. I mean, do you think having that as an entry point is part of the reason why we do, we are able to see this in a, in a different way? That's exactly it. I mean, the, the choice to tell the story from the point of view of a boy who has, who doesn't know anything else and actually very crucially has been protected from any real encounters with the darker side of this world by his mother. That's what's so remarkable because you know, for him, everything is full of, he's full of curiosity, he's full of energy, he's uh, full of stories, he enjoys his daily routine, he has absolute sort of unconditional love from his mother, which is the thing that a child most needs, is, is somebody who they feel safe with. And then it's amazing to be able to watch how he uses the really basic materials of this small place and populates a full childhood out of that. I just think that's a, and that's very true to the way children are. They, they work with what's around them. They actually don't require an awful lot. They're, what they need is to feel safe. And once that's there, they will make for themselves all of the, the interest and the, and the, and the richness of, 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 of life. Uh, it must have been quite a daunting prospect initially casting the role of Jack. I mean, but when you found Jacob, you must have just been so thrilled because he's just incredible in the movie. But initially, that must have been quite terrifying, knowing you had to find a kid out there, sort of eight-year-old kid, who could lead a film of this kind of magnitude. I, there's definitely, there was no guarantee that we would find some, but certainly not somebody like Jake. I mean, but there's no, really, no real guarantee that we would find somebody who, was, who felt young enough to, so that we still believed he'd you know, accept what his mother tells him about Room being the only, that being the whole world, you know, but still old enough to handle the, a part of this scale. So, yeah, they were the sweaty late night kind of panic attacks that I had in the, in the lead up to making the film. And then when we found Jake, yeah, it was just this amazing sense of excitement and relief. Um, and, and, and the sense finally that, yeah, there, we really can make this film. There's, there's, it really is possible to tell this story on on screen because until we did it and much as I didn't tell anybody else maybe except for the producer we would have candid conversations about it there was always the possibility that the film would be too much of a reach that you wouldn't be able to tell this story and Jake is the reason that we could uh, <clears throat> but I mean Brie is is incredible in this movie I mean was there ever a time when it's so subtle her performance when you were on set and you you were able to kind of stand back from the monitor and just go wow, that was quite special. Is that something that you can only ever really appreciate in the sort of editing suite? No, you can definitely feel it on the day. There are definitely times when um, a scene happens and, 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 and crew can feel it as well. And there were times when Jake and Brie were together and it was very natural and very lovely and, and incredibly real. And it just, it, yeah, it, 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 
infuses the room. The other moment where I stood back and, and allowed myself a sort of pleasurable moment of this is great was when we were filming the big dinner table scene when they come back from, when they're back in the grandmother's house with William H. Macy and Joan Allen, Tom McCann as Jake and Bree. And it's such a complex scene, there's so much going on and it's a round table scene which they can be notoriously tricky to shoot. And it just felt so good and I, I remember thinking, I can look at any of these people at any moment in this scene and something interesting is happening and that's a really wonderful position for a director to be in. And just just finally, I mean obviously you did, uh, made what Richard did in Ireland and then Frank was mostly in Ireland, then America, now Room is in America. Uh, do you think Frank was your kind of transition? Was that, was that the film that you think? It certainly wasn't my intention that it would be my transition because it's such a bizarre, pro I mean the, the premise of Frank is so bizarre that the idea that that would be the film that would bring me sort of US attention seemed so kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna put Michael Fassbender in a big head and make this film about an insane band of outsider musicians. However, it somehow worked and it now, yeah, it did open things up and then Room is further opening things up. So if you look back on my career, it seems to be very kind of focused on, on that movement from the small to the slightly bigger to the slightly bigger. But in a way, from the inside, that feels like a series of of accidents, albeit kind of happy accidents. It's a huge blockbuster next in, of course. Yeah, so I'll be, you know, if it does, if it's not Marvel, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. So Thanks much. a lot. It. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!